Hi guys, welcome! The official launch of RO2.0 Isle of Dreams has officially been announced and will be launching this August 23 for Global and August 27 for Sea Server. In order to prepare, we'll take a closer look at the new ancient equipment system for armor and offhand in RO2.0 Isle of Dreams. In the previous video, we've discussed in detail the different types of ancient equipment and the mechanics of obtaining, refining, repairing, slotting, enchanting, and decomposing them. This time, we'll take a look at the stats of all ancient equipment available to help you determine which ones are the most suitable for your character. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. The ancient equipment system focuses on increasing general attributes and are more universal for all job classes. They can grant huge improvements to your character if you got the perfect random attribute and have managed to refine it to plus 15. But do take note that some old equipment are still going to be more beneficial than ancient equipment as some are more specialized for certain job skills. Examples are the blanking coat for increasing stellar hunters trap damage and venom fang gloves for increasing begetters skill damage. Thus this new equipment system will lead to more diverse strategies in both PvE and PvP as you can mix and match the old equipment with the new ancient equipment. To familiarize ourselves with the different ancient equipment, we'll group them into which general builds they are most suitable for. The first group would be for physical DPS, the second group is for magic DPS, and the last group is for tanks and supports. We'll highlight the total stats you can get at plus 15 and the max value of the notable random attributes that you can get for each gear. We'll also do a comparison of the ancient equipment versus the old equipment if applicable. Okay, let's start with the options for armor of physical damage dealers. First is the Explorer's Suit, which increases raw physical attack by 900 points. There's also a chance to get plus 24% attack. I think this armor is going to be good for new players because they still have low attack investment from Handbook, Runes, and Guild Blessing. However, once you already have high raw attack from other sources, the attack you'll get from this armor gets diluted in the damage calculation. Thus, from mid to late game, it might be better to switch to armors that grant damage multipliers instead. Next is the Dragon Scale Armor, which increases physical damage by 18% or up to 33% if you get the perfect random attribute. It's a good universal armor for all physical damage builds, whether auto-attack or skill-based. With this armor, you can focus on boosting other damage multipliers such as Ignore Death or Physical Penetration. Next, we have the Voodoo Armor, which boosts attack by 20% and Ignore Death by 16%. You may also get plus 15% Pen, which is the notable random attribute for this gear. When comparing it to Perseverance Armor, I think Voodoo Armor is better in terms of DPS as it grants higher percent attack, Ignore Death, and Pen. It is also more universal since it is no longer limited to melee jobs. I think it is a really good armor for physical skill damage build as it provides a more balanced stat distribution. Next is Bone Dread Armor, which increases both physical and magic attack by 27% and has a chance to get plus 15% physical and magic damage. When comparing it to the Chosen's Armor, I think Bone Dread Armor is better in terms of DPS as it grants considerably higher physical and magic attack as well as physical and magic damage. The only disadvantage is you will lose the immunity to fear and the damage multipliers for Grand Cross and Overbrand. Nonetheless, it's perfect for builds that utilize both attack and magic attack in the damage calculation such as the Magic Dragon Breath build of Rune Master. Aside from these, there are also three other options for auto-attack builds and you can choose depending on which stat you are lacking. First is the Mourner's Robe which grants plus 20 crit and plus 45% crit damage as well as for a chance to get additional plus 30% crit damage. When comparing it to Tyrannical Armor, I think the Mourner's Robe is better in terms of DPS due to the plus 37% increase in crit damage as well as extra luck and crit which are vital in PvP. The only drawback is that you will lose the extra max HP and attack percentage. Second is a Feathered Hunting Suit which grants plus 35% crit damage and plus 15% attack speed, as well as for a chance to get plus 15% pen. When comparing it to Tyre's Armor, I think the Feathered Hunting Suit is better in terms of DPS due to the extra 7% pen. 
However, you will lose the set effect with Overlord Crab Bow, which grants plus 5 Agi and plus 10% crit damage. And last is Gladiator's Armor, which grants plus 16% attack and plus 30% attack speed, as well as a chance to get additional plus 24% attack. The other random attributes that you can get from these armors are as follows. Getting the damage to large sized monsters attribute will be very useful in PvE as most boss monsters are of large size and also to activate the inside effect of Minora's card in your handbook. For offhand, these are the options for physical damage dealers. First is Skull Shield for increasing melee damage by 18%. When comparing it to Skeleton Bracer, I think Skull Shield will be better in terms of DPS if you get the perfect random attribute which is plus 18% physical damage. Although Skeleton Bracer has 10% more attack and a 15% chance to deal double damage with single target skills, Skull Shield will provide more consistent DPS as it grants a total of plus 36% melee physical damage increase and this is not limited to single target skills only. The only disadvantage is that you'll lose 5% max HP, 250 max SP, and 20 flea. Moreover, Skull Shield is also a good alternative to Ninja's improved arm armor if you get a perfect random attribute as you'll have 7% higher melee physical damage. However, you'll get less defensive stats and movement speed. Next is Bone Flute for increasing range damage by 18%. When comparing it to Helion Bracelet, I think Bone Flute will be better in terms of DPS if you get the perfect random attribute which is plus 18% physical damage. Next we have Skinning Knife for increasing Ignore Death by 36% or up to 66% if you get a perfect random attribute. When comparing it to Rosa Chain, Skinning Knife will grant 15% more Ignore Death. However, you will lose 4 Strength, 30 Attack, 3% Attack, and 0.5 Attack for each Ignore Death if you switch from Rosa Chain to Skinning Knife. So I guess if you already have sufficient Ignore Death with Rosa Chain, then there's no need to change to Skinning Knife. Next we have Phoenix Feather for increasing Attack by 16% and Attack Speed by 24%. When comparing it to Golden Wrist, I think Phoenix Feather will be better if you get the perfect random attribute, which is plus 30% attack. Although Golden Wrist grants higher raw attack, attack speed, and pen, I think the extra 20% attack and 6 agi that Phoenix Feather gives will be enough to compensate for the missing stats. You can just transfer an armor breaking 4th enchant to it for more penetration. And last is Courage Flag for increasing crit by 25 and auto attack by 800, as well as for a chance to get plus 18% pen. When comparing it to Vink Magic Bracelet, I think Courage Flag is more suitable for auto attack builds now. This is because it only increases the raw attack when doing basic attack and doesn't boost percent attack. Thus if you are a novice guardian who uses the card tornado flea build, it might be better to stick with your Vink Magic Bracelet or use the Skull Shield instead. The other random attributes that you can get for these offhand are as follows. Next, let's discuss the Ancient Equipment for Magic Damage Dealers. For armor, these are the possible options. First is the Soul Catcher's Leather Jacket, which increases raw magic attack by 900 and max SP by 200. There's also a chance to get plus 24% magic attack, which is a perfect random attribute for this gear. I think this armor is going to be good for new players because they still have low magic attack investment from handbook, runes, and guild blessing. However, if you already have high raw magic attack from other sources, the magic attack you'll get from this armor gets diluted in the damage calculation. Thus, from mid to late game, it might be better to switch to armors that grant magic damage multipliers instead. Next, we have Shaman's Sacrificial Robe, which significantly increases magic damage by 18% or up to 33% if you get the perfect random attribute. It's a good universal armor for all magic damage builds, whether spellcaster or auto attack. With this armor, you can focus on boosting other magic damage multipliers like Ignore MDef, MPen, and others. Next is a Dream Eater's Disguise for increasing Ignore M Death by 16%, Variable Cast Time Reduction by 10%, and Fire, Water, Wind, and Earth Elemental Attack by 15%. 
When comparing it to Star Shatter's gown, I think the Dream Eater's armor would be better if you get a perfect random attribute, which is plus 15% M pen. Although your magic attack will be lower by 15%, your Ignore M Death, Elemental Attack, and M pen will increase by 11%, 10%, and 7% respectively. Overall, it provides a more balanced stat distribution for spellcaster builds. And last is a Demon Battle Armor for boosting magic attack by 16%, Ignore M Death by 10%, and attack speed by 10%. You may also get plus 15% M pen, which is the perfect random attribute for this gear. This armor is good for magic auto attack builds, such as the Bolter build of Chronomancer. When comparing it to Magic Abyss, I think Demon Battle Armor will be better in terms of DPS, since the 15% M pen is more important than the 4% magic attack, 16% ignore M death, and set effect with Sage Diary lost. The other random attributes that you can get from these armors are as follows. Aside from the unique random attributes we mentioned, I think the additional 20% fire, earth, water, wind, and neutral attack random attribute is also good to get for improving your DPS. For offhand, these are the options for magic damage dealers. First is Wisdom Totem for significantly increasing magic damage by up to 36% if you get the perfect random attribute. It's a good universal offhand for all magic damage builds, whether spell casting or magic auto attack. With this offhand, you can focus on boosting other magic damage multipliers like Ignore M Death, M Pen, etc. Second is Demon Skull, which grants up to plus 66% Ignore M Death if you get the perfect random attribute. When comparing it to Creeper Agreement, Demon Skull will grant plus 15% more Ignore M Death and 6 more Int. However, you will lose 6 Dex, 2% Magic Attack, and 0.5 Magic Attack for each Ignore M Death if you switch from Creeper Agreement to Demon Skull. So I guess if you already have sufficient Ignore M Death with Creeper Agreement, then there's no need to change to Demon Skull. Third is Dream Catcher for increasing magic attack and reducing casting time, as well as for a chance to get plus 18% M pen. When comparing it to Peak Platter, I think Dream Catcher will be better in terms of DPS if you get a perfect random attribute. However, its defensive attributes are lower compared to that of Peak Platter, as you will not only lose the magic damage reflection, but also some Def, M Def, and Max HP. Fourth is Voodoo Codex for increasing percent magic attack and attack speed. When comparing it to Contract Jewelry, Voodoo Codex grants plus 36% more magic attack if you get the perfect random attribute. However, you will lose 8% M pen and less 6 int. And last is Bolt Light for increasing holy attack by 24% and healing increase by up to 34% if you get the perfect random attribute. This offhand is better for increasing the healing power of saints. However, for holy damage builds, I think using Divine Eye will still deal higher damage compared to Bolt Light. The other random attributes that you can get from these offhand are as follows. And lastly for tank and support, these are the more defensive options for armors. First is the Phoenix Ashes Armor which increases max HB by 16% and healing received by 20%. Among the ancient armors, this grants the highest increase in percent max HP, wherein you can even get additional 15% max HP as random attribute. I believe this is a more universal version of Watcher's armor for job classes that can tank in PvE. But for Divine Adventures, I think Watcher's armor is still the best in slot for tanking due to the huge damage reduction stat it gives. Next is the Destiny Armor for boosting max HP by 8% and healing increase by 24%. You can even get additional 15% max HP as random attribute. I think this is a more universal version of Glorious Praise for healer support builds of Chronomancer, Solar Traver, Luna Densus, and Spirit Whisperer. But for Saints, I think the combo of Staff of Vitality and Glorious Praise is still better for the healer build. Next, we have the Royal Armor which is perfect for PvP as it increases Demi-Human damage reduction by 18% or up to 33% if you get the unique random attribute. Getting the other random attributes such as plus 15% max HP, plus 15% damage and magic damage reduction, and minus 20% damage from medium size are also beneficial in PvP as well. 
Next is the Tidal Armor which grants plus 4% max HP, plus 30% stun and freeze resist, and plus 10% reduction in fire, water, wind, earth, and neutral damage taken. These stats can be further increased if you either get the plus 15% max HP or the minus 20% elemental and neutral damage taken random attribute. When comparing it to Comet Warfare Armor, you'll have lower resistance to stun, freeze, petrify, and fear effects. To compensate, you may use the Oracle Mirror Extract attributes of Meteorite Armor to get a total of 80% stun and freeze resist. Next, we have the Spirit Colors Armor, which grants plus 4% max HP, plus 30% snare and fear resist, and 10% reduction in holy, dark, ghost, poison, and neutral damage taken. These stats can be further increased if you either get the plus 15% max HP or the minus 20% elemental and neutral damage taken random attribute. When comparing it to God's Blessing, the Spirit Caller's Armor grants 8% lower max HP even if you get the plus 15% max HP random attribute. But if you already have a surplus of percent max HP stat, I think you can switch to this ancient armor for its snare and freeze resist and higher reduction in holy, dark, ghost, poison, and neutral damage taken. And lastly, we have the Witch's Feast Clothes, which grants a total of up to plus 40% max SP, which is perfect for the Asura Dragon Fist build and SP Stellar Hunter build. When comparing it to the Chosen's Gown, the Witch's Armor grants plus 10 more int, and plus 14% more max SP if you get the perfect random attribute. However, you will still lose immunity to fear and the damage multipliers for Asura Strike and Hellgate. The other random attributes that you can get for these armors are as follows. For offhand, these are the options for tanks and supports. First is a Stone Tablet, which increases max HP by 16% and healing received by 20%. These stats can be further increased if you either get the plus 18% max HP or plus 45% healing received random attribute. I believe this is a more universal version of giant wing shield for drop classes that can tank in PvE. Next is the Sun Roulette which increases max HP by 5% and reduces the damage taken from small, medium, and large size by 24%. These stats can be further increased if you either get a plus 18% max HP or minus 24% damage from all sizes random attribute. When comparing it to Meteorite Buckler, you'll either get 10% higher max HP but 6% less damage reduction from all sizes or you'll have 18% more damage reduction from all sizes but less 8% max HP. Next, we have the Turtle Shield for increasing Def and M Def by 10% as well as reducing fire, water, wind, earth, and neutral damage taken by 24% or up to 48% if you get the unique random attribute. When comparing it to giant armor shield, the turtle shield will grant higher reduction from elemental and neutral damage taken. Next is the ancestral mask for increasing death and M death by 10%, as well as reducing holy, dark, ghost, poison, and neutral damage taken by 24% or up to 48% if you get the unique random attribute. There's no old offhand that gives damage reduction to these four elements, so I think it's a good idea to have one in case you're struggling against the holy and dark attacks of saint and rune masters, the poison attacks of blade soul, or the ghost skills of arcane masters and ninjas. Next, we have the Witch's Cauldron for increasing max SP by 24% or up to 48% if you get the unique random attribute. This huge boost in SP helps increase the damage output of Dragon Fist Asura Strike and Stellar Hunter's Star Arrows. When comparing it to Holy Mother's Regents, the Witch's Cauldron will grant 6 more int and 7% more SP but lower Def, M Def, Dex, and SP region. And lastly, we have the Ancient Coin for increasing SP region and reducing the SP cost of skills, skill cooldown, and skill cast delay. When comparing it to Arcane Codex, I think the Ancient Coin is better by a small margin. Although the skill SP cost reduction is lower by 10%, it compensates with a 20% increase in SP region. The other random attributes that you can get from these offhand are as follows. Alright, so far I've gone through the stats of the new Ancient Equipment. 
Do take note that the exact names may be translated differently once the patch is released in the English servers. Which ancient armor and offhand will you get for your character? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe for our 2.0 Isle of Dreams updates. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.